In March, Katie Meyer, a soccer player from Stanford, died by suicide, the first of four female NCAA athletes to do so this past year. Katie's parents, Gina and Steve, were limited in what they could discuss because of an ongoing legal matter with Stanford. We sat down together as parents to talk about the tragedy and how they are trying to move beyond their loss. Until you go through something like what we've been through, I mean, I think you're on this path of life and there's so much uh, innocence and happiness, but also you're kind of naive. I mean, that was our family. We were on this path and it got flipped on its head, like just flipped and shattered that path. So now we have to kind of take this new path. We have a lot of happy memories here, but there's also a profound sadness. It's amazing to be able to stand here where she played and yet, this is the same field. Uh, there was a massive candlelight vigil here for her. We are on air. We are? I think so. I think we are. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Hi. This is a letter that my father wrote me before the start of that 2019 College Cup. There once was a little girl whose dad would set her upon a tall picnic table at a big dog park. Her dad would stand her up on that picnic table so she could leap off of that table, sail through the air into his sure arms and hands. But what was happening here may have been deeper than what appeared. She's a little girl developing a boldness and trust in herself and the ones that she loves. Now that little girl is a goalkeeper for her school that she loves and teammates she trusts and adores, because of that boldness within, that little girl is strong from the inside out, and she, and everything she's been through, lives within you, Katie. Okay. Love you, girl. Love you too, Dad. You're the best. Thanks, man. You're the best. Okay. Good night. Can we talk about Katie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what made Katie, Katie? Katie was the epitome of, like, just a spitfire. I, I always say just perpetual motion. She was open just to what completely life. Completely open to everything. I had to offer. 505. A little bit of tomboy, but yet she also had this fashionista side. She loved Star Wars till no end. She was just fun. She would light up a room. She'd walk in and you would feel the energy change because she was that kid. Katie was the friend I went to whenever I needed anything. Um, if anything happened for me, it was as if it was happening for her too. And I think a lot of people would say that she was always there for them. She loved soccer, obviously. I know <laughs> that's just a given, but she loved soccer. She loved being a goalkeeper. And I think she was born to be in the spotlight. Soccer came into play because her older sister did it first. She was just fearless and she fell in love with it right away. Katie gave the speech before the national championship, and her big message was, the history's already been written, and now we just have to go and sign it. Going into the shootout, she gave us all the confidence that we needed. Autumn, can get it saved by Meyer. Turning around to our student section and doing her iconic, like, zipper on the mouth. After that, I was like, oh, we're definitely gonna win this game. Tori Hansen, a freshman for North Carolina, when they won in the PKs, it was just like all those years of hard work just kind of just came out. And the Cardinal are the queens of college soccer once again. She just couldn't stop crying. She is an emotional person, but not in that sense. And it was awesome to see. I think she was just so happy. I don't know, but I would think it was one of her top moments in her life. There is shock and grief at Stanford University following the death of soccer team captain and goalkeeper Katie Meyer. The 22-year-old senior was found in a campus residence. I can't imagine mm -hmm. your devastation. How did you receive the news that Katie died by suicide? I got a phone call from her friend Jonathan. Never in a million years did I think that this would happen with, with Katie. Mm -hmm. 
There were no signs, no red flags, no health history of any kind of mental illness. It was trying to do almost like our own investigation, right? And that's when we found out about the disciplinary letter that she had received after hours from Stanford. It was a heavily charged letter mm -hmm. with a lot of heavy legal language. And the way it was worded, it looked like a diploma hold. So many things that she had coming in her future, they were in danger of not happening now. Is there anything more that you can say about what the incident was? She was defending a teammate. Defending a teammate. This was something I think she was a little embarrassed about. She didn't want to burden us with it. Right. She probably thought it would get you know, blown herself. over, she could handle it herself. There is a stigma with suicide that there, that there is a long health history. That's not always the case. Right. It's not always the case. I always said if she could have taken it back, I think two minutes later she would have. When I heard the news of Katie, my immediate reaction was, I hope her parents find a way to help other parents mm -hmm do this differently. Yeah. And you guys are doing that. Katie's safe. Tell mm -hmm. me what it is. We're trying, yeah. We had no information that some stuff was going on in Katie's life and she was carrying a burden for a number of months. So we've come up with something called a designated advocate, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's the young person's choice, number one, yes or no, if they want to participate mm -hmm. in this program. So when they're signing up for school, they get to write who that person mm -hmm. is. That person would just get an email that says something to the effect of, your student was involved in an incident on campus. Mm -hmm. Now, you as the designated advocate, of course, would contact them. You don't have to, by the way, but you would. Because you you're- go, hey, the, what's, yes. going what's going on? on it's right? because opening I would. the conversation. Yes. It's opening right. up the conversation, because that's what needs to happen. Would this have saved Katie? Yeah, 110%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's why it's so hard. We have to, yeah, because we can't, we're in so much pain that I would not want this to visit another oh, family God, no. anywhere. We have ever. to we have to help so, another family from not going through this. And if we save one life, it'll you be know, worth it. It'll be worth it. I'm gonna go, I guess. So let's have a good day. When you're in school, you feel like you have to handle everything on your own. And a lot of times the way the university is set up, you do have to handle things on your own. For students to know that they have someone, that's a game changer because there will be things that happen where you just don't want anyone to know, but you need someone to know. Certainly something needs to change. Katie wasn't the first one and she will not be the last. With Katie save, there may be somebody we may be able to save. She's gone, but her passing is serving a greater purpose and I think that she would be proud of her parents, I think she'd be proud of Katie Save. I really think she's, you know, looking down on us, smiling. It's giving us some purpose right now that I feel like Katie is pushing us. Because everyone's like, how are you doing all this? And I'm like, I think it's Katie. I think she is pushing us. And we just have to change some things. We have to make a difference. CBS Sports reached out to Stanford for their response to the Myers characterization of the disciplinary letter. The university said in a statement in part, while the Stanford community continues to be devastated by Katie Myers' death, we strongly disagree that any correspondence from the Office of Community Standards brought about her tragic death. Stanford declined to share details on the matter and said Katie had been engaged with the OCS for several months and that correspondence sent to her explained a hearing did not mean she had violated policy. The email and letter offered resources for the process, including immediate support and an advisor. The statement concluded, Stanford cares deeply about the well-being of all of our students and works diligently to support them and consistently evaluate and how to improve and help them. Summer, my heart just aches for Katie's parents and I can't imagine you yourself being a parent, having yeah. them open up in such a way to you. What resonated most with them trying to find a path forward from here? AJ, I have to be honest, I felt incredibly honored to be sitting down with them and speaking to them. I also felt an incredible motivation to learn from them. I think I represented probably every parent in the country, in the world, in wanting to understand 
um, wanting to learn from them. But what stuck with me the most, not to mention, I mean, obviously their love for their daughter and their ever, never wavering support of their family, um, but this desire for Katie's save to work. And so when I said to them, the designated advocate was, was generally, he said, Steve explained was gonna be a family member or a friend or a neighbor, somebody that the athlete and the student knew. And I said, but what about me? When I first heard about Katie, I immediately wanted to reach out to every single Stanford student and say, you are not alone. You call me if you need me. Unload your worries into my backpack and I will carry it for you forever. Please don't put that all on yourself. And so Steve has reached out and said, okay, let's widen up the scope of these designated advocates and include anybody who would want to support these athletes and these students, these amazing human beings that just need somebody there in that one moment right? It was a true honor. I was incredibly emotional. And of course, I thought about my kids and um, the way I parent or the way I would parent. But yes, heartache and heartbreak are the two things that I took away from well, that. They'll obviously remain in our thoughts and prayers going forward. Yeah. And if you or anyone you know is struggling and needs help, please reach out to 988, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Call, text, or chat 988 for free, confidential, 24 hours a day, seven days a week support. And coming up, a unique look back at the 1972 Munich Olympics. My father was the one and only conduit to bring the news to the American public over 16 hours of coverage. So it, it really was a seminal moment and the first time I think the American public focused on terrorism and how terrible it could really be.